so I've cut out all the pieces, ironed all the pieces. What I'm not certain is whether it needs some kind of interfacing um, to make it less floppy. <laughs> First of all, let's recap what I've done so far. Uh, so as the title suggests, we're making a chef's kind of top. It's quite a complicated pattern, so I didn't try and, and copy any previous clothes or make my own pattern. So I just googled kids chef uh, DIY costume and found one that was exactly suitable for the height of my child which was 140 and there was a free BDF uh, patterns that were available to download and print out. So yesterday I printed these out and then it was the fun of, of sticking them all together. <laughs> Don't we all love that? But actually the pattern was really compatible. It was really well done. Only thing I had to do is or kind of look up was when I was printing from my um, computer it initially wanted to print 93% uh, so I had to make sure that my pattern came out as 100% although the sizes looks fine so but yeah so here I cut out the patterns it's a really tricky one though because um, <laughs> it was Chinese pattern so I don't have exact instructions how to do it but I'll just try and use my my experience, my knowledge and put them together the way I think they should be put together. But yeah, yesterday I also cut them out uh, uh, so uh, based on how many I needed. For this project, um, so I haven't said, <laughs> so, that, so this is the, this is the um, chef's kind of top for the child's um, pan, the panto or kind of Christmas uh, play. Uh, she is a baker so I'm gonna make hat as well this might be different a separate um, quick uh, video but uh, first of all today I'm gonna tackle and try and make this chef's costume for this I'm using ivory like off-white uh, cotton poplin because uh, she kind of mentioned, oh, it doesn't have to be pure white. So I thought, mm, I've got more of this ivory fabric. Why don't I use that up? So, um, so that's what we're going to do. All the patterns came with one centimetre at the edge. So I've never done so big edge. So that's going to be interesting. I'm not sure whether I overlock the edges at the moment yet or I'll just zigzag them. In olden times when my mum used to sew, she always did a zigzag and it was fine. So I'll see how it goes. So the first piece I'm going to sew is the colour. Right. Searches so really the single single popping cotton either, so it's quite weird. So last thing to do is the sleeve. I'll show you once I've done that. But I've overlocked everything else but the bottom part on the on the top did the front piece I did all around so it's not necessary to do it but I just thought I'll do it to make my life easier. The trickiest part to do is, is obviously the curved edges. If you are novice or sewist I would say do a zigzag stitch. So that should be the last piece done. I try to sew the top stitch of the serger is on my right side. <laughs> it's tricky on the plain coloured cotton poplin to understand which side is right and wrong. So I'm putting the interfacing on the wrong side. So I'm going to iron on the middle part, get it stuck and then just cut around it. It doesn't move. But I think officially you're supposed to um, cut it beforehand. So it creates a uh, much... Um, Firmer fabric. Just need to make sure I'm um, <laughs> doing it to the wrong side. So if I'm doing it wrong and you're like, this is not how you do it, let me know in the comments how I should have done it. I think I've got the purpose right. It's 
just um, how you apply it. Just the back panel and the sleeves. I'm not doing sleeves, so I think I've got it all. It's time to start sewing. <laughs> get these ones done just to kind of, uh, and turn it around I need to cut quite a few places so I could do this sewing just trying to prepare quite a lot um, to that when I was <laughs> pulling my sewing machine out I've got quite a bit to do not sure what I'm gonna do with these sides yet now the question is how does all this work? I'm thinking it just needs to go all around, leave a little bit open, turn it around. Next thing I need to think about is the front. So I could do this one, this one. I could do um, the collar as well. So that definitely needs to go before I do. Um, mm. How does that go? I was trying to figure out what goes where. I think I'm better off strengthening the back of the neck as well. I think I'll definitely use more of this interfacing going forward. Um, now I know how it works. Let's talk through the rest of it. So I realised, although I still need to think, oh, colour goes here, isn't it? So I can't do that. But I reckon I need to sew these two together before I do the shoulder seams. I'm going to pin that one together and then the other side goes to the other side of the front. So let's get the sewing machine out here and start sewing. 2.5 is a good width that I need to measure the one centimeter. Okay. So first of all I decided to do the, the neckline um, so I just connected these together and then I need to iron this. The second ones I'm gonna sew now is are these uh, cufflinks. So these are, I'm gonna do next. I'm trying to sew approximately one centimeter from the edge. So I've done the first stitches. I'm just going to give them an iron, press them out the same I did uh, with the colour. So I'm going to iron that out and then what, see what's the next steps. I think I'm going to iron the out as I usually are. Let's see, that's quite nice. I think in theory it will just uh, kind of fall into the right place <laughs> if I've done the right seam allowance. Right, not to forget that collar needs to go in between here as well. I sewed these as well. These need a little bit nip and tuck. Cut these up. up so that I'm gonna go into the sewing line in theory and I know line it up it should just nicely fall if 
that works out, I'll be super pleased. These are done. Let's see what I do next. I reckon I need to um, connect these shoulders as well.
for the base of the shirt I'm gonna overlock it and then just um, turn it up and, and sew over So this is a few days uh, after, or, or maybe a week after, um, when we did the chef's top. Uh, everything else is fine. So what? How? So we finished it off. Instead of buttons, we put poppers, so it's easy to um, put it on and off. White poppers. I think to make have a more impact, you could use colourful poppers. One thing, however. I did notice is that the sleeves were too long so I think the way it has to be is it needs to be turned back uh, the way I sewed it is that I left the bottom open at the moment so lucky me I think I'm gonna hand stitch the bottom because it's so so narrow I can't put it on my machine no chance so I'm gonna hand stitch it to the body of the shirt and then we'll turn it up and see how it stays up but yeah so that is what I need to do other than that uh, we are all happy with the end result so next step you should see a finished item I think I'm gonna use a single Red rather than double. Just gonna do like zigzag and that's zigzag, but yeah, in cross cross motion, just over the edge. So this is the outside, this is inside. Um, it's gonna take a small piece from the outside because I'm folding it over after it so it doesn't matter it's not going to be shown pull it through do a little step further and just push it through but yeah so I'm going to do that hopefully the final step um, in order to complete this chef's ad shirt we'll then attempt to do a chef's hat uh, that should be faster project so look out for this video as well 